Uh, my name is Martin Kreuch. I'm a producer at Nordic Games, the publisher of Deadfall Adventures, which is the game I'm going to show you now. Deadfall Adventures is a first-person shooter in the Lost World genre. So this is the same kind of genre where you've got your Indiana Jones, Uncharted, Tomb Raider. We wanted to go back to the roots of this very popular genre um, by showing you uh, the universe of Alan Quatermain, which was created by H. Ryder Haggard and the, the first, one of the first authors of the Lost World genre. And we basically reinterpreted his universe that he created for Alan Quatermain, his hero, and created our own hero called James Lee Quatermain, the great grandson of this prototype adventurer. Um, as you can see here, uh, the puzzle and the combat difficulty, because it's a first-person shooter, the first first-person shooter in this genre, but it's got puzzle elements, it's got exploration elements, so we wanted for the action players to have the option to switch uh, the difficulty separately. So you can decide, do you want the combat to be really hard and the puzzles to be easy? Do you want the puzzles to be hard and the combat to be easy? Just the way you prefer to play. Do you want to focus on the action or focus on the story? All down to you. The first level I'm going to show you is uh, one of the Arctic levels. All the, level, uh, all the areas in the game, Egypt, Arctic and Guatemala, they've got levels above ground and levels below the ground. A young fellow with a beard is you, James Lee Quatermain. Just going to skip this cutscene so we can go right into the action. I will, I will first turn on God mode so that I don't die while I talk to you and show you the, straight into the action. The game is set in 1943, 1944, so we're talking beginning of the uh, Second World War. This, in this uh, battle I'm fighting a group of Nazis. Um, all the weapons that you see, they are historic weapons, accurate, accurately built in all detail uh, as they were back then. They reload the way they were. You can see that especially well with this handgun once I empty it out. So this was the way that this uh, gun was reloaded. Um, so lots of details in the, uh, in the big variety of guns that you are, have available in your arsenal in the game. Here you can see that your NPCs are also fighting with you. This is not just decoration, they actually shoot the people. They will of course not shoot, uh, shoot away all your enemies because most of the work you will have to do. Um, but they will help you and also give you uh, helpful hints in case you can't go on at the puzzle. Just gonna get rid of the last few enemies here. In terms of the, uh, the percentage of, of uh, combat and puzzle, it's basically 70% action, 30% puzzling. And uh, the, there's a variety of puzzles that I'm going to show you later. But first, I want to sh uh, show you a little bit about uh, the exploration. Because as you can see, the levels are very detailed. A lot of uh, carved statues, a lot of uh, detail in the environment. That's because the game was started as a passion project by the developer. Um, they just wanted to create a really great game. And then we saw how much uh, love and how much detail they had already put into this and came on board as a publisher. So part of the fun is the exploration element. For this you've got the compass of your great-grandfather which does not point north but handily it points you towards treasures that are hidden in the uh, in the levels. But of course since you're an adventurer not a thief it's not that easy to get the treasures so they are protected by traps. So you'll have to decide for yourself whether for you it is worth trying to get that treasure or not. Because getting the treasures is optional, so it's the exploration is down to you how much time you want to spend on trying to get the treasures. But you're encouraged to get them because uh, as part of the storyline, as you can see it has a, a certain color, the different color of the treasures tells you what you can upgrade, like how you can upgrade your character later with the, this particular treasure. So all the uh, treasures act as uh, character upgrades. So you can choose to ignore them, but this will make the game, of course, much harder. In terms of the puzzles, here we've got a rather simple physical puzzle where you just have to shoot that rope to bring down a bridge. 
There's also light-based puzzles in the game uh, that you solve with your flashlight. Your flashlight also has a fo focused mode, which I'm going to show you later on an enemy. Because next to normal soldiers, you have uh, supernatural enemies that you have to burn first to be able to really uh, kill them. This is a narrative puzzle in the game where you have to uh, listen to the story that they tell you, that your, uh, your lovely colleague here tells you, and then look at the picture and according to the sequence of the pictures, uh, to the sequence of the story, uh, light the fires and this will open the next door. So a big variety of, of puzzles, of course, also just shooting puzzles where you have to shoot something, lever puzzles, actual puzzle puzzles where you have to put together pictures. This is a treasure map that you'll find hidden around the levels that show you uh, the location of the traps, uh, the, the treasures. Um, so near these, you will have to take out your compass and then find them. But it will also, as soon as you've got the map, it will prompt you to take out your compass whenever a treasure is near. Um, here I'm going to show you quickly a little of the classic puzzle puzzles. So you can see this is the type of stuff you will find in the game. Sliding puzzles where you have to get the um, whole shape right. But if I choose to ignore it, I will just uh, miss out at one treasure, but it's not going to uh, block the game or anything. Later in the game it will become more and more important that you use these traps. As you've seen, this is just taken out a soldier who was sitting below below the ice sticks. So you can decide how you want to kill them. Your flashlight, you can use it to unfreeze the supernatural enemies, in this case a uh, frozen mummy. They have no preference on who to kill. They will attack enemy soldiers, they will attack you, and as long as they are uh, not vulnerable, they are very, very strong and hard to kill. But as soon as I burn him a little bit, he will get very aggressive, of course. The mummy will get very, very aggressive once you burn them, as you might understand, and uh, attack you immediately. So basically, it's your decision. Uh, do you want to unfreeze them at all? Some of them will just come at you without unfreezing them, of course, and they will attack the enemies as well. Just gonna now switch to a different level to show you some of the outside levels, because in all the three um, sections of the game, which are the big, the big areas that you'll visit are Egypt, um, the Arctic and Guatemala, and each of them have levels that are above ground and below ground, so that you can, that you basically, uh, don't feel the transition between uh, levels so much, but you really uh, just feel like exploring a big area. So this is one of the outside levels in the jungles of Guatemala. As you can see, again, very detailed environment, a lot of, a lot of plants and waterfalls and everything you'd expect from a nice exotic location and this is one of the traps that you can as you see of course if you if you step on it it will hurt you if you shoot it from afar you can use it to shoot uh, to uh, damage your enemies just gonna quickly play something that we can cut out later yeah, so you can show no the problem. more important part Next to normal grenades, you'll have these babies to throw around. So you can throw bundles of dynamite. They explode a little slower than normal grenades, so you have to watch out to be far away from them when they explode, because they explode bigger than normal grenades.
So here you can see one of the altars where you then can basically spend the treasures that you've collected. When you interact with this, you can have the, you have the three types of treasures that you get and then within it you can choose what you want to upgrade. If you want to have your rate of fire, your reload speed, your base health, your base stamina. Just a little bit of customization depending on your playstyle and also to help you decide whether it's worth getting a particular, um, a particular treasure or not. As you can see, again, this, if I uh, shoot the button, you have got spears coming out of the weapon, uh, out of the walls. In the game, you've got your two weapon slots with the handguns and the dual wielding guns, but you also have these bigger babies, which are basically special weapons that you only find at certain points of the level. They did exist back then, but they're more prototypes that never made it into the war. So we thought you could, it would still be fun to play them, even though maybe they were not actually used in the actual war. And once you emptied them out, uh, they're basically empty, so all the other guns, you, for all the other weapons, you get ammunition from your enemies. And you can see here immediately that if I want to save ammunition, the best thing is to just use the traps and let the traps do the work for me. Especially later in the game and especially with greater amounts of mummies that start attacking you, that becomes very important. Farm 51 have developed several shooters in their time, so they know how to make every gun feel unique and feel uh, and make you really uh, find your favorite gun. In this case, the Fedorov, my personal favorite Russian machine gun. So in the end, it's all down to you deciding how you want to play it. Do you want to focus on shooting the the trap? the trap uh, buttons basically so they are easier to hit with a with a more precise gun or do you want to focus on just shooting people uh, with the gun list itself then a shotgun for example would be a better choice so this is the single player in addition to the single player mode you have several multiplayer modes like uh, deathmatch team deathmatch capture the artifact which is our version of capture the flag and uh, you have uh, co-op survival mode where you together basically play against uh, waves and waves of enemies until you can't hold them off anymore. Ooh, is somebody still alive? And uh, treasure hunt mode, which is a unique uh, multiplayer mode which we created for this game, which is basically a mix of um, shooting and treasure hunting where, you, where the team with most points wins. And also in the multiplayer, you've got kill streak bonuses, which, for example, turn you into a raging mummy, and you can just kill people with your hands, um, and stuff like this. So that's basically our Deadfall Adventures game. It's out uh, mid-November, 15th of November, on PC and Xbox 360, and we hope you will enjoy it a lot. Um, if you're a fan of Stuff like Indiana Jones, Uncharted, Tomb Raider, all this kind of stuff. And if you want to know where this came from, where this all, this whole genre started, give it a go and blast some enemies away. Um, just so that we know how to spell your name, would you mind spelling it for us real quickly? Uh, yeah, that's K-R-E-U-C-H. All right. Any questions or? Um, no, you covered a lot of information there. <laughs> You said it was sort of a 70-30 split between the action and the puzzles? Mm -hmm. okay. What, um... Ooh, I forgot the knife. It's okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, what game engine is this running on? Yeah. Um, the game is on Unreal 3 engine. Unreal 3, okay. And I think, like, that's one of the things about the game, like, there's not many games out there that look that great yeah. on Unreal 3 engine, like, they really got the last out of that engine if you, yeah. if you look at the details and also the wide levels yeah, it looks really amazing yeah I noticed at one point you were looking up and some of the light peeking through the trees reminded me of Unreal oh. yeah and as you can see it's got no it's got no health bar or HUD or, uh, or stuff like this uh -huh. but your screen just goes um, maybe I'll show a little bit of how it looks without uh, the god mode, the take off the god mode. Um, 
basically, as soon as people attack me, the, the, the screen starts getting bloodier and bloodier. And when you get hit too much, you will die. Just wait for them to shoot me. Or I, I can show it with this. Yeah, that's how it looks when you die. 